Welcome to Small Business Saturday's video series with your host and my husband. And my dad, Aaron Montgomery. Join the conversation. Let's talk some business. All right. Well, good morning, everybody. Hopefully everybody had a great Friday and uh, off to a good start of your weekend here. Uh, it's early for those of you on the West Coast and a little bit later for those of you on the East Coast and just the right time here in the Midwest. But uh, <laughs> um, all right, guys. Well, I'm not going to waste a ton of time talking myself today because I have a, a guest that uh, is a very good friend of mine and, and uh, he's got tons of great information. And um, so let's let's just bring him in. Let's do this here. Let's grab Eric Campbell. And uh, there he is. Good morning, Eric. How are you? Good morning, sir. Doing fine. And how are you doing? I am doing great. I'm uh, excited to uh, get uh, get this kicked off. Uh, you and I talked uh, yesterday on the Two Regular Guys podcast that uh, you know you helped me get this project started early on and and came on and and uh, joined me and helped me kind of grow this into this. So when I saw your your blog post that we're going to talk about a little bit here today, I said, "Man, this is something that people need to know about." So. Uh, Eric, today we're going to talk about uh, adding perceived value. Are you ready to dive into that? Absolutely. Value is something I talk about all the time, and I think everybody gets it into this buzzword term where invariably this is the big thing people say. They go, okay, you have to have your unique value proposition, your unique selling proposition, and it freaks people out because they see these little three-letter acronyms. It's like, oh, my UVP <laughs> or my UVSP. <laughs> And I want to tell people it's not like that. I mean, there, are there scary questions to be asked? Yes. And that's what I'll probably lead off with here. But it's not scary to think about value, folks. And it's yeah, not yeah. a new buzzword. We've, we've been talking about giving someone a good value in the business forever. And it's just <laughs> the real deal here. And this is what we're yeah. going to get into today totally. is that there's different ways to add value. And one of them is perceived value. And that doesn't mean you're hoodwinking people. You know, you're not... You're not tricking people with perceived value. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Well, that's good stuff. Yeah. The acronyms, you know, uh, UVPs and SWOT and all those kinds of fun acronyms that us marketing people like to use. It's because we we are a little self-conscious, you know, sales always gets all of the uh, the the gold, you know, for making all the sales and making things happen. And so we have to make yeah. ourselves feel by using these big buzzwords that you might not use. But uh, I, in all of my marketing seminars, I always try to make sure that everybody knows it's not uh, not that hard. So let's let's dive in, Eric. I want to oh, start off with, uh, you know, in your blog post, uh, and again, I've got it scrolling at the bottom of the screen here, ericcampbell.com, so go to everyone and check it out. Um, you start off with kind of a, a question that you hear a lot or, or something that a lot of decorators say to you and a ton of decorators say to me, you know, I can never charge that much in my area. We just can't sell it for that much. What's your response yeah. to that? Uh, usually what I'm telling them is they're not probably selling in the right way. They're not, if they think that they can't sell for a certain amount, they probably haven't tried. And usually what they've done is they've done pricing and I'm not going to get super into pricing, but they've done pricing by committee, which is what, <laughs> where they've decided that they're going to do an average of the five people closest to them or the people they think that are their competitors in the region. And that's where they're pricing. And they're not thinking about what people are paying for or why people pay for things. And part of it is it's just experience to some degree. And it's emotional. That's the, that's the other thing I'm constantly telling people when you're doing marketing. Um, we are emotional, social creatures. You think we make everything, uh, all of our decisions based on some spreadsheet that shows us all the benefits of what we're doing and how things cost and what our benefit is back. And it's not really true. When you're talking about someone who's, you know, uh, buying the team gear for their kids little league, yeah, they're looking for a value and you have to provide a value that's commensurate with what you're giving them and what you're charging, certainly, but they're not just making that decision there. Why do people have friends in the business? Why do people go to one place and you don't know why, even though it's about the same price as somewhere else? It's it's a perceived value that's going on. And the first thing I always say to people is you do have to ask yourself a really scary question though, because there is this chance that you're there and you're priced equally. You've done this pricing by committee thing. So you, you have a price that's pretty much the same as everybody else's. We're all working on the same catalogs of goods usually you're working with the same providers that most people are most vendors and i mean maybe you've got a special vendor but most of the time you, you probably don't for most of the things you're working on and so you the scary question is given that the prices might be equal or close to together and i'm not trying to you know race to the bottom and price things down is there really something about my business that would be a reason for somebody to choose me given that the area i'm in what 
is original, different? What do I do better than anybody else or differently than everybody else that would make you choose uh, my business, my product, me? Yeah. Truthfully, as, as a person who's selling or as a business owner, what makes you choose me and what makes you choose my shop over another one? That's a scary yeah. question. That's where you yeah. get into talking about value. Yeah. So that's a scary question. You add on top of that a scary acronym in uh, UVP, <laughs> which true. is exactly what you're just talking about. You, all those questions are, you know, what is your unique, unique value proposition? And that's just a fun acronym to use. But what is it that makes you special? What is it yeah. that, you know, and that takes some soul searching. That takes some, uh, you know. Being honest with yourself, getting other people to say things that you might not like about you if, if it's not exactly where you need to be. So, oh, yeah. Uh, I, I, I mean, there's not one way point. to do it. There's not one way to do it. The thing people, it makes me think of there's this restaurant I saw. It, I can't remember the name of it. There's a restaurant where they literally, they heap abuse on you. They make you wear a paper hat with a dumb name they make oh. up for you. I can't remember what this was. Somebody yeah. showed this to me on their vacation slides recently or like on uh, Facebook and they were talking about this restaurant and it had like insulting names on big paper hats and the people treat them <laughs> badly and they don't care if the food's right. But people go to that restaurant to have that experience. So it doesn't have to be just one experience mm -hmm. we're chasing I, here. I can I can see the restaurant myself. I mean, yeah. I, I've walked past it because I have no <laughs> desire to get involved in that. But <laughs> um, gosh, it, those of you viewing, uh, let us know what that restaurant's name is. That's, yeah, if you uh, if you know the one I'm talking about, please. I know jump exactly in. what you're talking about. I just cannot pick it out. So, any of you viewers out there, let us know what we're missing there. So, um, and also that shows you the value can be suited to a customer base. I don't want to go in there. You don't want to go in there. But there's somebody for whom that is my Friday night. Like I have got to go in and have the way or the waiter uh, treat me poorly for half an hour for what reason I don't know. I, say, uh, I can just go to some of the regular <laughs> local fast food establishments for that. But uh, <laughs> you got a point. Well, uh, I, I, that's why when we get down to it, we're talking about adding value, right? We're yeah. talking about adding value. I'm actually going to talk about not just perceived value. Perceived value is where we're going to get to and where I want everybody to get to. But there's two kinds of value. I also talk about what's like measurable value. Because um, that's the first thing you can do. And you, if you have literal utility, like the garments or the uh, accessories, whatever it is you decorate, whatever you offer, if the item itself literally has more utility than what somebody else is offering, um, <laughs> it works better. It's just a better garment. That's that's measurable value. You can work with that. Ah, we've got somebody coming in. Go. Uh, Thank Dick's you last very resort. much. Dick's oh, last right. resort. <laughs> Thank you, Marion. That's uh, exactly <laughs> what I was looking for. Uh, but anyway, we're talking about measurable value. And uh, apparently they're not giving you measurable value. That's <laughs> Well, hey, um, hey, they're they're busy all the time <laughs> though, so it's so they've got perceived value. Yeah. No, but measurable value. You have the utility of your garment. But if you're literally giving somebody a better value somehow, maybe you have tools that make it easier to order. These are things that are literal utility you can measure. Like, yep, it takes 50% less time to order from me than the other guy. Uh, it's less hassle. My shipping is. Uh, either free or bundled in some way that's that's good that people like. These are things that are fairly measurable as value. It's not yeah. perceived value. It's something you can put a number on or something that you can say, okay, this literally delivers more or something yeah. that you can't get anywhere and, else that's easy to see and measure. Yeah. And that could be as simple as, you know, a one thread color versus two thread colors or full color design yeah. versus a one color screen print, you know, th those kinds of things. Those measurable values there, I think, are... are oh, you know, sure. Yeah. Or I, and I think about that materials too. Let's say that you just happen to carry, uh, like I like, there's a matte thread that, and I'll go ahead and say who's makes it. Madeira makes a matte finish thread. And this thread has incredible UV resistance. People use it because it looks different. It's not shiny like embroidery thread usually is. But the thing, the sleeper thing with that is that it's got really high UV resistance. You can throw it on like a truck wheel cover or a, or like a Jeep wheel cover or a, a umbrella or something. You yeah. can sew that, you sew a logo with that stuff and it'll hold up. If you're the person who carries that thread somebody else and there's measurable value if you want outdoor embroidery come to me because i actually am doing that and it's part of, it's a little bit perceived value too because you're the person who knows that but there's a measurable reason why your stuff's more valuable what i want to get into today is perceived value where it doesn't have to do with with the cost of the product the cost of goods or the amount of labor you put in yeah. that's the thing the, Perceived value is not tied to those things. Could there be more labor? Could there be different cost of goods? Sure. But what I'm saying is it's not just a calculation based on the cost of what I put into it. And I'm trying to multiply that by something and get it out. Perceived value is about adding value through other means, through uh, emotional, psychological, experiential, different ways to add that value, things that make people feel, perceive, see that your product is somehow better or more valuable. Okay, so let's let's just dive into that. You know, we've sure. got uh, 
you know, we've got as much time as we really want, but, uh, you know, we'll try to keep it down. <laughs> so, and, you know, you and I could be here all day and, and uh, I've got yeah, a absolutely. birthday party to get to. <laughs> I not miss these seven-year-old birthday parties. It's the highlight of my weekend. So. Um, <laughs> but I, and I, I am on the hook for uh, my, my dad is expecting me for pre-Father's Day <laughs> action. Yeah. So, I'm like, right. so I will have to let you out of here. So, so I'll, let's, I'll try and let's, cut it down a little bit. <laughs> well, just, you know, give us some ways. Let's, yeah, let's sure. uh, get into the meat here. Tell us some ways that we can add that perceived value then. Yeah. I mean, honestly, it, it really is about adding the perception that something is worth more. And it and the first thing I like to uh, hack on about is novelty. It's something that pr the promotional product side of this world really already knows very well. Um, adding novelty is easy. It's just when you have something people haven't seen. If you have something new and unexpected, maybe it's a, a new garment that's interesting. If you've ever seen like the a hoodie that has the uh, bottle opener in the seam, if you ever see the, or like the uh, aprons, for a while there, there were uh, barbecue aprons, since I just talked about Father's Day, big Father's Day product, barbecue aprons that had a little central pocket for a beer dead center in the front of them. Oh, nice. And it was yep. just the size of a beer <laughs> bottle. It I was something those, that was novel. Yeah, yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> sure you can find so you can sublimate one of those for you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I mean, or or it could be a decoration process. The first time I ever did reverse applique or a rough cut applique instead of something clean and edged really well. The first time you ever do something like that, that's novelty. If you're in the know as a decorator, you know you'll find like there's some materials that are new. The first person who ever did glitter flake heat press material and made it more commercial, that person had novelty because it was a look that you hadn't seen before. It was something yeah. brand new, um, and so new products, new processes, that's novelty. Also, if the way you handle your business is just novel, is different. Uh, and we'll talk more about that as we go on. But, uh, and I'll, I'll refer to this guy a lot, Johnny Cupcakes. We saw him at ThreadX. He has the way of, the way that his store is set up is weird and novel and interesting. Um, it's an experience you might not have had. He has everything set up where it looks like a bakery. His goods are in bakery racks. He's got you know, vanilla scented paint on the walls. I mean, he, he bought in pretty heavily, but that novelty is there. It's something different. It's an experience people don't have. And so there's the value of that. And I, I think, honestly, the first guy who ever had a fidget spinner in the, in the, um, Promotional products world before it got saturated for a little <laughs> while, he benefited from novelty, and there was a perceived value because that guy knew the new stuff. And also, let's say um, you have a, a promotional products distributor and she knows all the new stuff continually, you're going to keep going to her because that novelty is refreshed. It's someone who keeps yeah. in on on those new markets, on the new products, the new processes that are going on. Um, so that's part of it. Be feeling like you're ahead of the curve. Also, as a, as some customer, you like to buy an item where you haul this item out. Like, let's say the first person who then got to give away uh, wireless phone chargers when the uh, you know iPhone, the latest iPhone came out that had wireless yeah. charging. That yeah. person who gave away the imprinted wireless charger felt like a boss because they jumped out and nobody else, everybody else is handing out car chargers and they handle out a wireless key charging pad and it looks yeah. awesome for them. So that novelty also trickles down. They want to provide novelty in their promotional goods as well. So All that's right. that's that's a really easy way to grab a little a yeah. little bit of that perceived value. Oh, that's perfect. Now I know in your blog post, and I've got it kind of up here, and I've been sure. scrolling back and forth in it. But uh, you know, there's tons of uh, a great sections in here, so tons of great ways to add that uh, perceived value. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't want to give it away. I want people to go over to ericcampbell.com <laughs> and uh, and check it out. But I do want you to give us one other way, and then uh, we'll we'll wrap it up. See if there's any questions, and uh, get on to our Saturday here. Uh, absolutely. I think one of the other ways that I like to put up there is um, creativity. I think that's one of them. Uh, I mean, we, we talk about purpose. There's other ones on there like purpose. There's cause marketing. There's all that stuff where you're attaching yourself to a value, to a movement that you think is important. Those are great things. But one of the ones that's really within our reach as decorators is creativity. Not only creativity in our decoration processes, but um, having a creative pursuit of what we want to do in our, in our business in general and trying to answer questions in a better way. Because really when people come to us with their questions. Uh, so I like that one a lot. I think though the really the baseline we have, because we've talked about niche marketing, both on two regular guys and uh, it definitely in uh, your own Saturday uh, business segments, you talk about niche marketing one way or another, it comes down to it. And so the one other piece from 
from the blog post that if I'm going to say one thing that you have to get to, it's specificity, it's having special expertise and a knowledge of your customers. So in your niche, if you have a niche that you're working with, uh, it's like you'll know that niche well. For me, the one that the example I give in the blog and I often give, I was playing folk music a lot with people. I was gigging and playing with, uh, you know, little bands and standing up at folk music concerts. Yeah. Uh, and when we were doing that, you're always like hanging around, dragging a bag of random music books. They're of a certain size and they're always falling down and everybody had tote bags and they were the regular non-gusted tote bags that kind of fall down and don't work and they're shapeless. I made a little business for myself where I had this gusted tote bag that just happened to stand up straight next to your chair when you were sitting and playing and was and looked nice. And I had designs that reflected that culture very specifically. We all played really weird folk instruments. So I had these designs that have the instrument on them. And then underneath it has a phonetic spelling of the instrument because that <laughs> was funny that nobody knew what it was. Yeah, exactly. But that was super specific to the group. However, it sold like hotcakes because I had deep knowledge in my niche. And that knowledge l allowed me to have a product that was actually had the utility and value is something that people really needed and wanted and a product that had like, that novelty, that creativity you usually have, but it was all linked to the niche. So when you have deep knowledge, like if somebody is a shooting shirt that has special features and you know that and the other guy doesn't, um, the other shop doesn't, they're at a disadvantage. You have a higher perceived value because you're the person who knows how to get me the thing I want. The the fly fishing gear is the other thing that I usually talk about. I've had people where it's like, if you know the right bucket hat and can decorate it and it's good for that fly fishing customer, they're going to come to you instead of someone who goes, oh yeah, well, here's a here's a you know fly fishing i here's a bucket hat his number whatever in the san mark catalog and there's nothing yeah. <laughs> wrong with that hat but people who have a really specific desire for a product that's in their niche knowing that's going to make you more valuable yeah that's perfect i mean that, that's that's huge it's a great great amount of stuff you know th throughout my career you know mm -hmm. my my value add has always been you know as simple as just straight up customer service the, yes. the, what the customer Absolutely. Putting, putting their needs, putting, you know, having empathy for what they're going through, uh, you know, those kinds of things have always been kind of my go to and it's served me very well. You know, I haven't had to worry about, do I need to be, you know, the latest and greatest? Do I need to be the lowest price? Do I, you know, all these other things, you know, I've just kind of always hung my hat on, you know what, if I go above and beyond for these customers and always put myself in their shoes, you yeah. know, not worry about, you know, every once in a while losing a little bit on a job here or there it's been successful for me, you know, so you can be as simplistic with it as that, you know, or you can take these things to the next level. Like you said, we've talked about uh, niche marketing and things like that. And, and, and you talked about knowing specifically what your core is, you know, and you knew what the need was. So somebody else could have provided bags to that group, but sure. you knew what challenges came with those bags. You know, same thing could be said if, you know, you're doing a ton of like 5k shirts, you know, anybody can print 5K shirts and do just fine with it. But can you make that process better for them? Can you make it yeah. easier for them? You know, can you polybag everything and be able to allow them to hand that out? You know, we talked uh, yesterday. Can you, you know, do some data, uh, you know, variable data kind of stuff? You know, what those things don't change your bottom line costs all that much, mm -hmm. but they change how much people are willing to pay. Well, and it can be simple because the thing is people, I know what's going to happen is someone's going to be listening to this and go, I don't, I don't have time to know a customer that deeply. I don't have time to do that. I don't have the technology to do a data merge or di digital printing. Yeah. Literally a personal callback can be delight, can get yeah. delight people and say, I wasn't expecting that it was unexpected extra that I didn't think I was going to get a handwritten note. I would also say uh, the, it's like a cereal, the prize in the box makes you happy. It's another thing I like to talk about. <laughs> If, Perfect, if, that's you, a great one. if you literally put like, let's say you have a self-promotional item, you have a, a unstructured cheap $2 hat and you throw one in the top of every order, you would be surprised how many people will walk into your shop wearing that hat and they love the hat and ask you how to, can I get more? And you're like, of course you can. It's a billboard. But yeah, yeah no, exactly. it's little stuff you throw in and it doesn't, and it doesn't even necessarily have to be related to what you're doing. It's little extras that help. And you're right. Customer service, just going above and beyond. Um, and, and people think, okay, well, I, is going to be a big investment? It just doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be equipment. It doesn't have to be a ton of time. It just has to be an acknowledgement of the customer treating like them, not only like a human being, but like they're valuable. Uh, the, the worst thing you can do in this industry, I'm like going to talk into the camera and get intense here. The worst <laughs> thing you can do is look at your customer like you're doing them a favor. 
you aren't doing them a favor. They're keeping you in business doing the thing you love to do, and you owe them a little bit for that. I'm not saying the customer is right when they're unreasonable, won't pay when they're being terrible to you. That No, they have to treat you like a human being too. But the worst thing you can do is get up in the morning and think, I'm doing these people a favor by even getting up and printing today or getting up and running my machines today. You're not doing them a favor. There's a ton of people standing in line who want to do it too, but you, they are in a relationship with you and you can value them for that. And just making that value known and being real with folks and wanting to know what their problem is that you can solve is enough, frankly, to give you that perceived value that doesn't have to do necessarily with a ton of extra labor and definitely doesn't have to do with driving your costs down. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll give you a really good example of something that stands out to me along those lines, Eric, is, um, you know, I'll start with kind of a big, you know, we've all probably heard of Zappos, the uh, mm -hmm. really the first shoe company that ever sold shoes online. You know, they didn't have the brick and mortar. And this was back in a time where it was unheard of to buy shoes on the internet. Yeah. Um, and you know, what they did is they took everything and put it all into being customer focused. And it wasn't, like you said, it wasn't stuff that had to be specifically related to the shoes. I mean, yeah, they made it easy for you to return them and, and, you know, you could buy three pair and try them all on and send two back, you know, kind of thing. You know, those are all great services and that was all kind of got you over the challenge of not being able to try them on in the store, but they went a step further with it. You know, they had customer service people that were on the phone. So might as well, you know, if you called them up and said, Hey, I need to find a pizza at midnight and they would help you with that, you know? And, and yeah. so, it, it was all about being customer focused and they hired based on, you know, the empathy level that their customer service people had and people that worked in the office, you know, so that's kind of like the big side of it. And for me, yeah. you know, I take yeah. something like that and distill it down into decorators. You know, I, I work with a company now through uh, pick the gift and we get some crazy projects out of them and, and they're crazy good too. You know, uh, 2,500 uh, mugs for Twitter and it came through this company. Oh, and by the way, they needed it really quick. And, uh, you know, so the price, we didn't even talk about the price. I sent them a bill after mm -hmm. the fact and they, yeah. they said, here's the credit card, you know, and, and it happily paid it. And, and it, so it wasn't, I didn't have to worry about what the value was. My value was the fact that I was willing to take care of them and jump through big hoops to get there. Yeah. And now, this is a fairly large promotional products company. They just had a, a kind of an all hands meeting and my name came up in that meeting. Like you need somebody to help you out. So directly after that meeting, I got five emails from them uh, and five projects that I couldn't do, but I helped every single one of those people Absolutely. find somebody that could do that. I, I sent two of them to a direct competitor because they could do something that I couldn't do. So, you know, I was, yeah you know, confident enough in my serviceability, but that's what I hung my hat on that service level. So that's the, again, the perceived value taking these, these things that, you know, maybe don't seem like a big deal, but they are a big deal to your customer. And, and so if you're treating them yeah. right, treating them like you'd like to be treated, man, it goes a long way. So well, sorry, there's no mind. better so way. Awesome. Oh, Hey, that, <laughs> that is a perfect surf books moment because I can't tell you how many times I have sent something either to a shop larger or smaller than the shop I was at or one that had equipment that I didn't have. Because the last thing you want to be is the guy who either um, did not have uh, what they said they did. You don't want to over promise and under deliver. So you don't want to try and make what you have work when you can't do it. Or be the person who just shuts someone down and says, yeah, I can't do that. Well, there's no value to you right now for them. But if you're the person who gave them the line on something else, the chances are that they come back when there is something in your wheelhouse are a lot higher. And the chances that they tell someone else like, oh, hey, yeah, no, it didn't work for this project, but call these people. They know who to call. And if you have that product, you'll be the first stop. You'll be that that referral stop where you're the first person someone else refers other people to. And that's really valuable. You can't get over the social proof of having somebody's friend tell them, oh, yeah, well, I know this folks, these folks over here, they will help you sort that out. They know where to go for stuff, even if they won't do it. Yeah. Plus, there's nothing like that to prove that you're in it for more than the money. I hate that because there's, there's a lot of people who think, you know, you're just a salesperson. You're trying to get me. And you're yeah. like, well, no, I'm not. I'm trying to solve your problem. If I can solve it, yeah, I'm going to sell you my product because I believe in it. Yeah. It's my, I believe in my product. If I can't solve your, your problem with my product, I know who somebody who will. And I'd rather have you 
have a good experience with me in some fashion that you can yeah. refer to than not have an experience with me at all or have a poor experience worse than that. Yeah. So no, that it's it's all about listening to a customer or a potential customer actually caring. That's the thing. You have to stop and go, <laughs> nope, I actually care about the problem they're having. And you have yeah. to give yourself a minute to get in there. I know days are busy and it's hard to do it, but give yourself a minute, put yourself in their shoes, care about their problem and answer as best you can. And that's a big chunk of perceived value. I mean, all the other stuff that in my blog post, there's tricks and they're, it's, they're not bad things to do, but they're tricks. They're, they're ways to get you in the mind space of what's not based just in pricing, what's not based just in the amount of effort or materials I put into something that causes someone to value my product higher. Uh, those are all ways to just get your head around that. But honestly, it's anything that makes you better, easier, more fun even to deal with either as a person or as a shop. Any of those things increase your perceived value. We all know that we go to people we prefer to go to. I go to one Starbucks when I go. I don't go often. When I go, there's one I go to because I like the people behind the counter. Mm -hmm. That's it. The coffee between it and the one down the street, not particularly different. I go because <laughs> of the people behind the counter. Absolutely. Are, it's all part of your value. Absolutely. Well, Eric, I'm going to close with a, a quick story that, that kind of to me, takes a lot of what we're talking about here and puts us into more of a general, just even outside of of business. And and I don't know if you may or may not remember that. I'm sure you probably remember it somewhat. But Eric and I, you know, I think I'm going to speak for him a little bit. But we've got a great working relationship. You know, I think we've become friends over over the years, and that all started by Eric doing what he did. I I was uh, kind of between jobs. I had a had a little business, but my soon to be wife had just moved to Albuquerque and I was trying to figure out if I was going to be moving to Albuquerque too. And, and I had been interacting with Eric, I think just on Twitter, if I remember right, Eric, but uh, you know, so we didn't know each other other than a few tweets that we had shared. And uh, I happened to be in town and I came to his shop to, to visit with them. And uh, you were slammed, you, you know, as usual there at Black Duck at the time, you guys were going hog wild and, and you were super busy and you took time out of your day to stop, make me feel like you cared about me and show me around the, the place and show me what you did and show me everything else. And that really meant a lot to me. And I, I don't know if I ever told you that or not, but that really meant a lot to me. And I'm like, man, this is a guy that I enjoy. <laughs> want to be friends with and i hope we have a chance to down the road and it just so worked out so there's a you know do something right even though it might not be the most convenient thing it may or may not work out for you in the future but i think we get to do a lot of fun things together now so that's pretty absolutely. cool absolutely no i didn't i didn't know that's how you felt about that but honestly that <laughs> i'm glad because that's what I, I like to do and i think that's the thing if you let yourself you open yourself up to the possibility that everybody is your next uh, friend in the business or friend whatever in any yeah. way you just say okay this is a, a friend i don't know yet um, and I know it's it's hard because in business, people sometimes do uh, work you over for bills or you, the other things that when the money gets involved, gets hard. But yeah. when you when you start your interaction with people, that's how you should feel. You're like, this is somebody I'm friendly with, even if it hasn't started yet. And I'd like to help them out. Yeah. Um, if you start with that attitude, just even if you tell yourself that before you start, if you're not someone who's prone to feel it that way, and I know some <laughs> folks in the business who aren't, start there because you never know. You could be friends like uh, Aaron and I are now. You know, yeah. we're we're yeah. hanging out on a Saturday talking business and having a good time. I mean, because if we turned off this these cameras right now, we would still do this. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, we have <laughs> we have many times. <laughs> Good deal. All right, Eric. Well, thank you so much for your time today. And remember, Absolutely. everybody, get over to ericcampbell.com. Uh, I didn't even look. I should have. They can sign up there and kind of get uh, notifications yep. and stuff, right? They, they can indeed. There's a there's a way to sign up for the newsletter. That's all it right. is really, you'll get your yeah. posts. You'll get a little uh, chunk of the posts. I mean, you can also go up there and there's all of my uh, icons on the top for all the social feeds that I'm on. It's probably easier to get me there. Um, honestly, I'm, I'm more present there, Facebook, Instagram, than I usually am on the blog. Uh, I've got some new posts finally coming back again. I, I had been uh, off the posting <laughs> schedule for a while, but I've got some queued up that I'm about to start to let go. Yeah, but cool. um, yeah, EricCampbell.com and the contact form there, people think that it doesn't go anywhere. It really does. If you use the contact form, you can talk to me. It may take a little longer than you might want to. Facebook might be faster if you catch people yeah. on there. But use that contact form, email me. I will talk to you. Awesome. All right, Eric. Have a great Saturday and uh, enjoy your time with your father. 
Oh, thank you much. And you have a great one. I know the kiddo birthdays are hard, but uh, yeah. <laughs> I hope you have it'll a good be, one. It'll be a blast. And lots of, check my Instagram feed for the stories and <laughs> follow up. Right on. Yeah. Awesome, guys. All right, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. And uh, we'll check y- you next Saturday. Same. Uh, well, we, I, I may move the time a little bit. Stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> it was almost same business time, same business channel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Stay tuned, everybody. Talk to you soon.